everyone today i'm going to be doing a little question and answer video to get my channel started so you can get to know me a little bit better i asked for questions on both my tiktok and my instagram which i will leave linked below if you wanted to check them out i mean most people probably came from those but if you didn't then you're very welcome to check them out and i wrote them all in my lovely notepad not all of them but most of them so yeah let's let's get started how old are you and when is your birthday so i'm 24 years old young sorry and my birthday is on the 22nd of january 2000 i am aquarius i think i'm aquarius sun cancer moon leo rising i'm not entirely sure what that means but from what i do know and ha people have told me it's so so accurate so yeah, where do you live and where is your dream place to live? I'm really happy with where I live right now. However, it's not my complete and utter dream. I currently live in Essex in England and I also live part-time in Carrara in Costa Rica. My dream is to stay in the same place in Costa Rica, but in England probably move to Dorset or Devon or Cornwall. I love it down south. The nature is just so incredible i love the coastlines there where i am i'm on the thames and i have just like kind of stopped swimming in it so much you know it just feels a little bit gross so i'd love to live nearer a more beautiful coast down the south of england but yeah i'm i'm pretty happy for now when did you start foraging? How did you get into it? So I started foraging a little bit when I was really little with my mum. It's literally as long as ago as I can remember. We foraged blackberries, sloes, nettles, but that was kind of as far as it went. Um, I did really enjoy that. I loved nettle soup as a child. I loved going to do that with my mum and we always made slow gin. I didn't drink it, but I really enjoyed making it with her. We picked blackberries and made stuff with the blackberries. But as I grew older, I got into it even more. As you can tell, I'm like super into it now. It's something that is involved in my every single day, whether it's just my dried things in the cupboards or whether I go foraging for a tea, which I do most days. So I got into photography quite a few years ago now and I loved taking macro photos of plants and insects and as I was doing this I was really researching what I was taking photos of as I wanted to know more and write about each photo and as I was doing this I realised how many different plants were edible so I started researching this more, reading about it, looking on the internet, talking to people about it and yeah that's where I'm at now I do my own foraging walks and foraging is a part of my everyday I love it so much tips on how to live a more natural and sustainable lifestyle so i get asked this question so many times i probably have so many tips if i were to think about it for a while so i'll definitely do some more content on this however product wise swap a swap one of your regular products out for a natural product one at a time and um, so then you can find what you really like say like start with a moisturizer find a natural moisturizer that you really like and swap it out you can also make your own really really easily which is a really sustainable way um i'm gonna be definitely doing some more content on making things and like aromatherapy and stuff so stay tuned for that um but definitely start swapping out product by product as i mentioned in my last video there's a really good website called naturissimo naturissimo and they have like really clean beauty products on there um and there's loads of books that you can buy to make different things so yeah and also another thing that i do which helps me live a more sustainable lifestyle i get a veg box delivered every week it's full of only english vegetables no plastic no nothing that can't be recycled composted or reused so i love that i get mine from riverford this isn't sponsored by riverford but if you want 15 pounds off your first box from them i will leave a link for that down below 
I've been using them for a couple of years now and I just absolutely love their produce and it makes me feel really good not having that extra waste from food because a lot of it isn't even recyclable if you go to a supermarket which is just crazy um so yeah but thankfully I was brought up in a household with my mum who was an aromatherapist when I was younger so she was always using fairly natural products a lot of essential oils and stuff she thankfully had that knowledge very early on um however we're growing together every single day and changing out our own products every day however now we're pretty much 100 percent natural what are your favorite plants to forage this is such a hard question that i get asked all the time and i say it so often oh this is one of my favorite plants but i could say that about nearly all of them because they're all just so special in their own ways i have favorite ones for tea favorite ones for snacking on while i'm walking i'm um, sorry i'm getting a little bit toasty so i'm just taking my cardigan off um i'm loving the late summer forageables right now like apples blackberries um mulberries pears i'm loving just going for a walk and be ab being able to pick completely fresh snacks from the trees and the bushes it's amazing for tea i love yarrow for digestion fennel also for digestion mugwort for lucid dreams and sleep pineapple weed for sleep i love samphire horseradish there's literally so many i love ground elder um the list is pretty much endless i can't really choose so i'm sorry about that but yeah i say all of them are my favorite to be honest obviously nettles as well they give me such a huge energy hit which is just amazing i'm loving nettle seeds at the moment what is your favorite way to enjoy the fruits of your foraging is it the thrill of the hunt or are you more into creating culinary masterpieces I love this question. I love both. Um, however, it's easier for me to find the time to go for the foraging hunt because it just involves me going for a walk, which I do every day anyway. Um, I, I love it. It's a pure meditation for me. I love cutting things and bringing them home but when you bring them home there's a lot of processing that needs doing and if I don't have that much time um, it's quite sad but I, I like both but I have more time for the hunt and then quite often I just bring them home and dry them to use at a later date however I do love creating masterpieces with them as well I love getting creative how to start foraging as a beginner um, like I said for the products start one plant at a time um, one that can't be confused with something poisonous so I would start with nettles and yarrow um, just really get to know each plant at a time its flavor what you can use it for all of its different nutritional benefits and folklore and history there's a lot to each one and it's really, really interesting. So I'd definitely recommend that. Um, I'd recommend reading books. Um, the best one I have read so far is The Forager's Calendar. So I'd recommend that. There's also a book called Forage by Liz Knight, which is also good, but it's not like as in depth as what I would like. I'm also writing one, which will be out sometime next year. So if this is in year's time, check that out. Also join Facebook groups. There's like Foraging UK. I'm in Essex. There's like Foragers of Essex. Um, and you can go on there. People post all different plants that they want to identify. And there's admin that are experts that can tell you. You can also start to identify other people's if you really know what you're talking about and that actually taught me so so much also look for foraging walks in your local area if you're in Essex I do some um, it's really a good way to learn because you can see the plant physically in person because on pictures in books on drawings it doesn't it's not quite as accurate you don't get the size scale you don't get the scent you don't get the touch so I think it's really important to go with someone that knows and see the plants in person. 
what was the first plant you ever foraged and did it spark a love for nature? So I've always had a complete love for nature and it wasn't foraging that started that, it probably did increase it even more. Um, I loved making mud pies in the garden. I spent all day in my tree at the end of my garden. I just loved it so much. And this was before social media and everything. I can't even imagine what it's like growing up with all of that. Because part of my growing up was with social media, but it was so, so new. But when I was a child, there was like no fancy TVs, no iPods, no iPads. Um, just nature which is the best thing it could have been really so I'm really really grateful for that the first thing I've probably foraged was blackberries I reckon we did sloes which I remember when I was about eight or nine nettle soup I loved but I it must have been blackberries favorite plant-based desserts now I am a real dessert lover I love sweet things after a savory meal I make so many cakes <laughs> like big two-tiered cakes with lovely cashew butter ice cream on icing on um, my favorite dessert is probably a chocolate cake a homemade chocolate cake I also love lemon and nettle seed cake which I have a recipe for that so I will also link that and for the other cakes I make I like follow the same sort of recipe that I've created for my lemon and nettle seed cake so yeah instead of the lemon and nettle seeds i just add cocoa powder um so yeah that is probably my favorite dessert i also love chocolate my favorite chocolates are who and halo who is h-u and halo you know how to spell halo they're my favorite chocolate brands and i just love chocolate so much um i also love apple crumble i've got one in the oven right now i'm so excited to have some of that it just this just reminded me i literally was gonna forget that there was apple crumble. Um, I also have blackberry ice cream in the freezer, which I'm gonna get out to eat with my crumble. So I'm very excited. I love apple crumble. What is your favorite meal? Um, I don't know if you mean breakfast, lunch or dinner, but my favorites are probably breakfast and lunch. Not sure why, I just, I just love those. Um, but if it's my favourite meal, I love like a big potato salad with loads of herbs and oil and nutritional yeast. I love pasta so much. What else do I love? I love like, an, I love noodles. I love so many things. I love jacket potatoes. I love a big warm salad with loads of nuts in. Um, yeah, I don't, oh, I love soup and toast. I don't really have a proper proper favorite because I love so many different things. Next, how do you come up with ideas for your fairy-like food? Um, it's all just intuitive to be honest. I use different colors and flavors. I'm quite naturally good with flavors and I'm also very creative and artistic so I just kind of use my plate as my canvas. I don't really get inspiration from anywhere else except my little brain and my garden. How did you learn to cook? Um, I'm pretty much completely self-taught with cooking. I'm sure a lot of it is just absorbed from my mum as my mum's really naturally a great intuitive cook. Um, I cook intuitively as well. I know what flavours go well together. I know what flavours I like uh, and which ingredients that I like. So yeah, I'm pretty lucky in that way. I also started cooking for myself very young because I turned vegan very young and I cooked a lot for myself then and my mum was pretty busy with uni sometimes so I cooked quite a lot for myself and I really really enjoyed it. I wasn't like forced to but I just really wanted to and really enjoyed it and have had a huge passion for food for a very long time. I mean since I was born so yeah and that is still just growing and growing and growing i'm still learning to cook how long have you been plant-based for i don't know exactly how long but it's been a very very long time it's like 12 or 13 years now probably 13 or 12 yeah i don't know but yeah it's been a very long time do you think you will always be plant-based um i'm not sure i I know that I will never eat animals because I love animals so much and I just could
couldn't do that. However, if I had my own animals, possibly I would eat eggs and dairy. I don't know though. Um, I do eat honey, so some people wouldn't even class me as plant-based. Um, I do, but yeah, I, I'm not gonna rule that out for the future, but yeah, I will always at least be vegetarian. What are your favorite books? that you've read this year so we definitely have a few i log all of my books in my goodreads which i will also leave down below um but this year right i've just finished reading wild power which is about the menstrual cycle it's taught me so much and inspired me so so much so wild power was absolutely incredible i loved a book called the shaman's apprentice which was about finding natural medicines in the Amazon rainforest. I loved braiding sweet grass. I loved the shamanic wisdom of the Huichol. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, but that was a really, really good book that I've read this year. I think those are my favorites. Um, so yeah. Have you got any upcoming travel plans? Um, my next plan, isn't planned yet and it's probably Costa Rica again in, in November but for the foreseeable I will just be staying in England because I have a lot that I want to do um, work that I want to do to make space and money for more fun so yeah nothing nothing too planned at the moment what is your favorite thing you've ever cooked that is a really hard question probably some kind of pasta dish or potato salad um, or beautiful, colourful, warm salads that I've made. There's some that I've posted on Instagram and I look at them and my mouth waters. Um, I have made a delicious mulberry ice cream, which was so good. So yeah, there's nothing that completely stands out, but I do love pretty much everything that I cook. What are your hobbies? Um, I have loads of hobbies and loads that I don't have time for, but my current hobbies, foraging, um, playing the guitar and learning to sing and teaching myself both of those. I've fallen off of it for a very long time, so I'm trying to get back into that now. Walking, I've just started running again, a very short distance, but I'm really enjoying getting my heart rate up and it's making me feel super healthy. Um, infrared saunering, <laughs> cooking, foraging, I've already said that. But yeah, they're my main hobbies. Um, I used to do a lot of painting, but I haven't had time for that recently. Also love making jewellery. I think I might do a little bit of that today. Um, so yeah, they're my main hobbies. How do you cheer yourself up when you're feeling low? So nature is always there when I'm feeling low and always can cheer me up just taking a walk moving my body being present just breathing deeply breathing in the beautiful scents of the forest and flowers um, always really really helps me putting my focus onto a book really helps me listening to Spanish music really helps me like really upbeat Spanish music I literally can't help but move my body no matter how I'm feeling also playing the guitar and singing because I just can't really, s I can't even sing when I'm sad. It just completely transforms my mood. So those definitely really, really help me. Where do you get your clothes from? Most of them are from charity shops or Depop. I look for Zara, secondhand Zara, just completely natural cotton things. I only wear completely natural clothes now. Um, I've also recently been sent some lovely things from some brands on Instagram, which I literally love so much. They're my favourite clothes. They're things that I wouldn't usually be able to afford for myself. And I've been sent them and they're just like the dreamiest. I was sent this dress. It's so gorgeous. This is from Raffia. It's just so beautiful and flowy and comfortable. But yeah, it's important to shop sustainably and Depop and charity shops are the perfect way to do that and supporting small businesses and markets, sometimes from little boutiques on holiday. So yeah. One last question, is there? Oh no, there's a couple more. What's your least favorite food? So I don't love like creamy kind of foods. I don't like 
cream or like mayo kind of vibes that's never really been for me other than that I can't really think of anything obviously that's plant-based um yeah I, I love most foods if you could be any animal in the world for a day what would you choose I love this question I would definitely be some kind of bird probably like an eagle or something as I would just love to fly I would love to experience that one day um I know it's never gonna happen but I would love 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 to fly and that is why and I'd probably choose a bird of prey so I was a little bit more safe if you know what I mean when is your book coming out? Um, I don't have a planned date. I'm just writing it when I can. My laptop is unfortunately broken right now and that's where I was writing it. So it's a little bit of a slow process, but I'm hoping for it to come out next year. You will all know about it when it comes out. It will be a very exciting time. And lastly, what are your favorite and least favorite things about social media? So, I have had all of the different types of relationships with social media. My relationship with it now is super, super healthy, which I'm so happy about, but it's taken such an unhealthy relationship with it to be able to have this healthy relationship with it. It came out when I was like 12, so I did grow up with it in my very impressionable te teenage years. There was a lot of comparisons between me and other girls and I used to compare myself and it caused a lot of troubles with eating and so many different things and so much self-doubt and self-hatred and I'm so grateful because I'm past all of that now. I don't experience any of that. Um, but yeah, I think that is definitely one of the worst parts of social media. You can compare your lives to anyone's. People only post the best parts and people's bodies and faces on there. So many people are edited or, you know, like it's really not something to compare yourself on because a lot of it isn't even real, you know. So that is definitely my least favourite part of it. I know it's also very, very addictive. I'm so grateful because I also don't find it addictive anymore. I have a very healthy relationship with it now. I go on to post, post my stuff, make my stuff, scroll through just my main friends things and then I come off and I don't spend very long on there anymore. Um, I think it's a great tool for creators and businesses, like seriously an amazing tool because I think so many people can do well from it. Um, businesses can do a lot better from it um, but yeah that's my favorite part of it and my least favorite part of it so yeah thank you so much for watching thank you to everyone that asked me questions for this video I'm so so grateful let me know if you have any other questions because I can do another one of these so comment if you have any other questions or I can just reply to them in the comments let me know what other videos you want to see because I, I do have a list of different things that I want to film but obviously I'm filming them for you guys so if you have any recommendations or requests please 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 let me know I hope you have a beautiful day thank you so much for watching bye